so we are back um today i got some more parts look at this more parts more parts i got my rb25 to cd09 adapter kit and under this box is an intake manifold and i got a bunch of little miscellaneous stuff in there clips heat protection all of the smaller stuff so as for the intake manifold video i'm gonna take a minute to do that i got some things i need to get done on that manifold before i put it in so that'll probably be next week but today pmc kit is going to be getting installed so one of the things about the pmc kit for you guys that don't know is it comes with hardware the adapter plate the lightweight flywheel and i think the this bushing right here comes with a new one of those it doesn't come with this piece right here this is the uh i can't think of the name of it as of right now but you guys probably know what it is this is off of the automatic transmission rb25 neos you will have to source this piece in order to run this kit it's not going to include it because the flywheel as you can see doesn't have any gears to engage the starter that's what that is for so just the fyi if you're going to run this the pmc kit you're going to need to find or source one of those i'm not sure how much it costs because my rb25 neo was an automatic so that's part of the reason why I got this kit in the first place. I like this one over Collins because you don't have to do any cutting on the bell housing. You know, I think with Collins, you got to cut like around right here and put the adapter plate in right there and all that funky stuff. None of that has to be done with the PMC kit. This bolts right up to the block and bolts right up to the trans. This also bolts right up. The only cutting that you may or may not have to do is to fit the starter. Uh, there's another video that I will reference in the comments. Help me out a lot with figuring out how to do this. And I think they notched the bell housing over here somewhere just to fit the starter because it was like bumping. The housing of the starter was bumping into the bell housing of the trans. But that's literally it. Um, another thing about this kit is it converts the clutch system to a 350Z slash 370z clutch so once you run this you know after you bolt everything up the rb25 clutch will not work it will have to be a 350z clutch um so yeah that's pretty much it as far as the uh information wise stuff this kit i got from drift hq they had it in stock i think i bought it I ordered it maybe Saturday and it was delivered on Wednesday. So it came pretty fast. They had it in stock. It was $900 plus $100 shipping. So that'll give you a decent idea of that. When you take into consideration like what type of swap or how you want to mount your CD09 to the RB25. Uh, I just felt like going this way was the cheaper option. Basically, sort, sourcing all of my individual swap parts was the cheaper option than spending like three to four grand on a Collins kit or something like that. This is 900 GK Tech Shifter. I think those are two, three hundred. I got mine from a friend on Facebook, so it was cheaper than that. Excessive mount and excessive bracket were a total of maybe 200 so for the whole thing looking at probably like $1,500 just to you know for the whole like getting the transmission in the car and connected to the engine and that's not including a clutch and stuff like that whereas with the Collins it's like two three grand out the gate so just uh, food for thought. But yeah, for the first things first, um, you want to go ahead. All of this stuff, the lightweight flywheel is lightweight. And it is aluminum. And the 
bracket here, as far as I know, it's pretty much going to bolt up. It also has these holes for the guide pins as well. So you could kind of just, you know, I'm probably going to have to take these AC lines off because they're bumping into it. But you can kind of see, like, it's going to go right on there. And this is also, I think this is billet aluminum, which is really cool. So what I'm going to do is I'm probably going to undo those AC lines, heater hose lines, whatever, and pop this on. I'm not going to torque anything down yet because I don't have any Loctite. <laughs> um, but I will come back and torque things down in the future. I'm going to just mock up this so that you guys can kind of see how it fits and everything like that. And we'll be going from there. I'm not going to put the transmission on yet because even though this is, I have everything to get this bolted to the engine and in the car, I'm getting this transmission rebuilt. So I have to take it to get rebuilt first. And then I'll, you know, put everything in. So here is the hardware that comes with this kit. Like I said, there's the bearing that goes right there. It's going to be different. So you're going to have to use this one because it's going to you'll see uh but it also comes with all the you know to the housing bolts the flywheel bolts and the transmission bolts as well so in the next step you could take this off uh pop these out pop out this bearing if you can uh it's gonna be fun because the flywheel bolts directly to this and they these are the flywheel bolts. I believe that they might be a little bit longer than these. So pop these off. Uh, let me see if I can tell you what size they are. They look like they would be like a 17. Ouch. So let's see. Here's an 18 just to be sure. And no. So I'd say maybe 19 or 20-ish for those. Looks like a 19. Pop those off. Get that um get this plate out so you can get that bearing out good thing that you're replacing this bearing anyway can't go wrong with that so i'm gonna do that off camera and we can go from there all right so got them off it was pretty tricky uh basically what you're gonna have to do is figure out how to keep the engine from rotating me i took a breaker bar put it on a crank and wedged it to the lift that way I was able to break them all loose after hitting it with an impact and then that breaker bar. But just wanted to show you the difference. So this is the bolt that comes with the kit. And these are the stock bolts. So you can see the big difference. It's accommodating for the flywheel being bolted onto this plate. Uh, as far as, yeah, it looks like we'll take this piece off and flywheel. Is this even called a flywheel? I don't, I'm not sure what this is called exactly, but it should just slide off. I'm just doing it with one hand. I'm trying to see if I can get it with one hand, but probably not. Might have to do it uh, off camera. Never mind. There we go. But yeah, this is what you need. I'm not sure about this, but I know that this is what you need. So I'll set this right here. And then the bushing right here, this kind of just pops out. But mine seems to be really good. It's just that that bushing sits like that. And this bushing has this lip. This one's going to sit like this. So this has to come out as well. Uh, probably just get like a little flat head in there or something like that and try to pop that out uh specialty bolts this is getting too full so i'm gonna try to see about getting that out and putting this uh new bearing in really wish i had some loctite but it is what it is uh so we'll so continue as far from as this bearing man 
I still ain't got it out. Um, uh, problem with this is there's a couple ways you can get this bearing out from what I've heard. You can get the tool, which is a bearing puller. I believe it bolts into these and then pulls this out. I don't have that. Second objective or second way to do it is to stuff bread in here, apparently, like a loaf of bread, literally, and put a bolt that fits snug. This is the coolant train, I believe. So you stuff bread in there, get a decently sized bolt that fits snug, stick it in there, hammer it, stuff more bread, hammer it, and that pushes it out. I feel like I heard the same method could also be done with paper, wet paper, soap, um, and I think that's it. I don't have any soap here. The only paper that I got is what I just did with the heat protection. Look at that, by the way. Uh, with the heat protection, which is that kind of paper, but I don't have any water to do that. The last thing people were saying was you can cut it in half. I'm definitely too scared to do that. feel like I'll damage the crank, even though it's all the way back in there. Uh, I don't have a Dremel to cut it in half. I just have the Sawzall and the cutoff wheel, so pretty sketchy. Um, somebody said a punch can work. Not 100% sure about that one. I may try it, may not try it. I don't think I have a punch that big. This is the biggest punch I got. Yeah, that's the biggest punch I got, and that ain't really doing anything. So there's a note to that. Um, I think the last thing that somebody said was that they hammered it, they drilled a hole into it and then like hammered and chiseled it for a bit. But I'm not trying to drill it either. I don't want to do anything like drilling or cutting near the crank at all if I can keep from doing it. That's probably what I'm going to do. So I'm not sure uh, how to get that off as of right now. I might just have to rent that tool, but with me not having a ride, mm, that's when we start pushing things back. So we'll see. If I do get it off, I'll cut to it and then we'll go from there. All right, so I've tried a decent amount of things. Um, I only recorded one and that was wedging this nut in here, basically like that, hammer it in all the way in. The only thing that I couldn't get with it is that I don't have the right thread pitch or a bolt that has the right thread pitch for this nut. So I was trying to wedge it in there and see if I could twist it out or like break it loose or something like that, but it didn't really work. So looks like regardless, I'm going to have to go to AutoZone, whether it's to get a bolt this size and a nut that matches or to just rent the tool to pull off this bearing or whatever. But yeah. So, this is the only real obstacle when it comes to this. Once you get it out, you can literally just put this in and hammer it on there. Um, but, yeah, so. So, out of the big bag, you'll get these bolts. These are the only hex bolts in this entire bag. These are the ones that go to these two brackets down here. They thread in from the back side. I have three of them in, as you can see right there, but I don't have them like tightened down and stuff. You can also see it from that side as well. So those tighten down the bottom half of this, um, just so you guys know. And then I'll also kind of go through the rest of them. So these two, for the starter, it's duplicates of those. So it's probably some other ones that you could use as well. But these two holes, that one and that one, are for the starter motor and uh, those bottom ones this one um, this one this one and I believe that one are all for the uh, brackets all right guys I have figured it out um look at it it's a mess but the thing that worked for me out of everything that I tried was I took a drill, 
I use this tape to mark kind of how far it is from the drill bit to the actual crank. And then I masked it off with tape. It's kind of destroyed now, but I masked it off with tape so I wouldn't drill into the crank. Punched a hole here and a hole on the opposite side. Drilled in all the way through the bearing itself. And just used the uh, flathead with the hammer just to work it out. Basically splitting this thing in half. And now it looks like it is finally starting to give way which is fantastic or at least up here you guys don't know how perfect this just was and if you look looks like i got i did drill into the crank a little bit but it was definitely minimized i could have went a lot deeper especially on that side this side is more because that's the side that I kept going back to drill more to like completely split this side. I just wanted to weaken, but that shouldn't do too much. We are good to go. Uh, we can go ahead and pop the other bearing in. I wish I had some Loctite. <sighs> I think that went in my eye. Um, but yeah, this just pops in and you just hammer it on like that and we are good to go from that point on. So after you hammer that on, make sure that it's flush, as much as flush as possible. I used the little green rubber thing. Then the this goes on. Oh man, I'm so glad I got that. And this goes on right after it. So uh, it's gonna take a little bit to push this on. I'm gonna have to do this. Uh, let me get the tripod set up because I'm going to need two hands for this, but you'll see what I'm talking about.